Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching the news at 10 live on Channel Television. A reminder of our top stories. PDP leaders reply President Mamadou Buhari ask him to withdraw order to the military ahead of Saturday's elections. Also accuse the ruling party of training operatives in China to make card readers work faster. INEC chairman raises hope on Saturday's rescheduled elections. Already 180,000 card readers reconfigured for the exercise. President Buhari summons Security Council meeting. Kaduna State Governor briefs on Kajuru killings, says death toll has risen. And US President Donald Trump appeals to Venezuela's military to withdraw support for Nicolas Maduro. ChannelsTV.com has more information for you and on YouTube.com slash channels web you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on a mobile device via your browser or download the Channels TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channels 24 app have an, eye an eyewitness feature that you can use to share pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. And now to the crucial Security Council meeting held in Abuja today. President Mahmoud Buhari reviewed the security situation in the country with heads of security agencies. One of the issues raised is the recent killing in Kaduna State where the death toll has risen to over 100 people from the initial figure given. The general elections was also discussed at the meeting. Governor of Kaduna State, Nasir El Rafai, who spoke on behalf of his counterparts from Borno and Adamawa, however, gave assurance that the states are ready for Saturday's election. The security meeting is coming only days before the rescheduled elections. The nation's heads of security agencies and governors of states facing security challenges are meeting with the commander-in-chief. President Buhari received briefing from the governors, at the end of which the governors are sure of their readiness for Saturday's elections. We noted the significant improvement in the security situation across our states in spite of the challenges and thanked the federal government for making available its security assets uh, to the states any time we needed them. Across the states, we are ready for elections. We do not believe that the level of security challenges will preclude elections not taking place all over our states. They also got assurance from President Buhari of more security assets in their various states. Mr. Erufai talked about the killings in the state, describing those denying same as irresponsible. He says new facts have emerged. The, the last report we got is that over 130 people were killed, not even 66. Okay? And the Fulani leaders have provided the names of all these people. We have the list, we'll release it to the press. On President Buhari's stance on ballot box snatching, he believes those complaining have something to hide. His Borno State counterpart believes the Buhari administration has done much to tackle insecurity, but that the challenge is far from over. Mr. Shitima says there is no going back on the fight, even if he has to pay the supreme price. Leadership requires courage. I will go back to Gamborungala next week. I'm ready to pay the supreme price prize if needs be, and I will not go in a bulletproof car. Nigerians are hopeful that beyond free, fair and credible elections, there is need for the process to be conducted in safe and secured environment. The assurance from the security meeting should be a morale booster for the electorate. From the presidential villa, Ibrahim Adra, Channels Television News. The hot exchanges between the ruling party and the main opposition party appear to be raising some concern in the country. And many believe that politicians should begin to temper their language in such a manner that political supporters will not act negatively. Now ahead of Saturday, what should be the approach of politicians in not only managing their expressions, but also in ensuring that their supporters conduct themselves in a civil way ahead of the rescheduled election. 
Joining me now to look at all these issues is a senior lecturer in the Department of Political Science at the University of Lagos, Dr. Imano Ona. Dr. Ona, thanks for joining us on the News at 10 Thank tonight. you, Thank You've you. seen the events in the last one week, a yeah. lot of disappointment uh, over the rescheduling of the elections. Yeah. But the statements that have been made, the utterances from these politicians, what do you make of them? Yeah, the utterances have been uh, very exciting, very provocative. Uh, almost irresponsible, you know, across the political uh, divide. Leaders are talking as if they are thugs, and uh, it is unfortunate because all these kind of talks go to uh, tell the people, you know, what to do. And if the people act in the way that the leaders are talking, then uh, there's trouble ahead, you know. So it's, it's a pity. Whose responsibility do you think it should be to uh, restrict or sanction some of the utterances that are being made? Because nobody's taking responsibility for this, and nobody's yeah. no, nobody's looking at the impact that it yeah. has on yeah. you know the people who are listening. Yeah, I think we got it wrong early in the day because um, these uh, utterances, this type of uh, negative utterances, were. Uh, being made right from the start of uh, the campaigns. And nobody asked any question. It would have been a better situation if some of these leaders will say something, will make all these their frivolous allegations, and then there will be an authority that will call them in for questioning, you know, to come and explain exactly the basis and the meaning of such uh, allegations. But what we have seen is that anybody can come up and say anything and then get away with it and nothing happens to the person. And because of that, they have kept on the heat. They have kept on saying all manner of things without any proof, without any facts at all, and then they get away with it and the polity is being overheated. It's totally unfortunate, you know. Yeah, but that still doesn't answer the question whose responsibility it is. To yeah, it should that. ordinarily be the responsibility of the police, you know, to call in people who are, for instance, telling us that elections are being uh, or are going to be rigged by one party and the other. They call them in to give us, to give the police more information, you know, because it is the police that we handle such a, a situation if they actually uh, come to pass, you know. But now, it is as if the police is handicapped. It is as if they lack, I don't know whether it's moral authority that they lack or what, but b because they are not calling in anybody. People are just making uh, frivolous allegations all around the place. But the problem is not just that these allegations are frivolous, but that these allegations are having a lot of impact mm -hmm. in the polity. People are behaving, people are believing these people that what they are saying is right. And then people are preparing to confront whatever situation that they say will come to be, you know. And that means uh, uh, possible violence, you know, when uh, the situation uh, becomes uh, right. Yeah, some have called on the other political, uh, other leaders in the country to wade into the situation to help douse the tension. Do you think, you know, them speaking now, is it a bit too late knowing that we're just counting days now to the general elections. Well, other statesmen could have done something, you know. But that would have been if they had spoken earlier, I mean, uh, earlier, you know. And I think that many of these statesmen are also in the, in the ring. Many of them are also even part of this kind of state base. But be that as it be, it is now almost too late for them to even make any desired uh, impact. Mm -hmm. I think that right now, what can douse the situation is the manner of elections that will be conducted on Saturday. If INEC conducts a free and fair election on Saturday, then the tensions will, uh, uh, you know, almost evaporate. Hopefully. Dr. Yeah. Emmanuel Ona, thank you again for joining us on the News at 10. Thank you. All right. Inspector General of Police uh, Muhammad Adamu has been talking tough ahead of Saturday's election, warning ballot box snatchers and thugs during the process to desist or have themselves to blame. The IGP, who attended the security briefing at the presidential villa in Abuja, says the deliberation resolved to further provide adequate security in the country. He, however, encouraged voters to come out on election day to vote without fear of molestation.
The members of the security community and intelligence community came and briefed Mr. President on the security situation in the country as a result of the postponement of the election. And we've deliberated on the consequences and uh, came up with the resolve to further provide adequate security uh, within the country so that um, the electorate will come out and cast their vote without any fear of molestation. So every Nigerian is encouraged to come out on the election day and cast his or her votes without any fear of, of uh, molestation. The security personnel are ready and prepared to protect everybody. Anybody that feels that he can come out and disrupt the process, you should have a rethink, because that situation will not be allowed. If you plan and allow yourself to be used at thought, if you come out, whatever happened to you, you, you take it. Ballot snatching, ballot buying, surgery will never be allowed. Anybody that is planning to snatch ballot boxes or is planning to um, be allowed to use as a tout will have his, himself or herself to blame on the election day. So you better don't even allow yourself to be used. When the news of 10 returns, Securities and Exchange Commission continues clamp down on unregistered investment scheme operators across the country. We'll have more in business news. Stay with us.